Hi, I'm Dave Hilgendorf, and welcome back to Wednesday Work Advice, episode number four. My question for you today is, what are your job expectations? This time of year uh, is a time of year when I typically sit down with my boss and we review the, my performance from the previous year, and we talk about expectations. What are expectations for the new year? What are the goals? Uh, what, what's going to define success? at the end of this year. And for many of us, we do that for ourselves personally too this time of year. We set goals for ourselves. Expectations, you might say. Well, um, I thought I heard uh, in uh, my Bible reading recently, Micah 6 verse 8, and it spells out pretty clearly what God's expectations are for us. So I thought that we would read that together and talk about how we can apply that to our job and the rest of our life. So Micah 6, 8 says, He has shown you, a man, what is good, and what does the Lord re require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So there's three things there. Let's take them one at a time. The first is to do justly. To me, do justly means do the right thing. So what is that? Well, um, you can start with what your boss expects from you at work, um, as well as maybe the overall culture of your employer. Uh, they probably spell out certain expectations around code of ethics and, and uh, the kind of culture that they want, uh, as well as maybe your individual goals. So you can do justly by just doing what your boss wants you to do, doing your job well. Uh, but fortunately, as Christians, we don't have to just rely on that. We we get all sorts of great advice from um, from God through his word on how he wants us to act, both in general as well as at our job. And in uh, in this in our, my book, Jesus is at Work, and the videos that are available based on that, uh, we go into a lot of detail about, you know, what are God's assignments for us at our work? And that's all part of doing justly, I think. So uh, then let's look at the second one, love mercy. I think it's interesting that it didn't just say to be merciful, but it actually said to love mercy. Do justly, but love mercy. So it kind of gives you a sense of the priority and the importance of mercy. And it shouldn't be a surprise to us. I mean, God is such a merciful God. He loved us when, when we um, were unlovable, um, when we were separated from him from, um, from our, uh, because of our sin. And he showed mercy to us. And he, that's just the kind of God he is. And, um, and he wants us to share that same kind of mercy with others. And we can certainly apply that at work. I mean, there's so many opportunities at work to um, uh, give someone the benefit of the doubt, maybe cut someone some slack, especially when maybe others are not, because a lot of times expectations are, are pretty high at work. So we can, we can love mercy by just erring on the side of mercy with our coworkers. And we can certainly do that at home too, with our with our wife and our kids. We can we can show grace and mercy to them first. So what's the last thing? The last thing is to walk humbly with your God. And there's so much in that one little phrase. Um, just first of all, just the idea of walking implies you know a daily, uh, regular, all day long kind of a, uh, kind of an experience. This is basically how you're living. And how are you? How does God want us to live? He wants us to live humbly. Um, you know, Jesus said that blessed are the poor in spirit, which, um, as I've been uh, understood, that is another way of saying being humble, thinking less of yourself than others, uh, placing others of a high importance around you. And then it says, walk humbly with your God. So, you know, that implies, you know, not just. Um, having a part-time relationship with God or going to church on Sunday, but walking with Him daily, um, bringing Him, you know, inviting Him into every part of our lives and doing so with a humble spirit, with reverence and awe for Him. And we can definitely do that at work uh, as well as at home. And, uh, and that's it. There's just those three expectations that God has of us. So um, I think they're easy to understand. And they're really actually not that hard to, to implement in our lives. And there's so many benefits that can come from that if we really take those to heart. 
So next time you're wondering, you know, what do I need to do today? What's expected of me? Well, we all have our, our to-do list, um, things that keep us busy, and, and, and that's fine. Um, but to maybe remind ourselves of these, these three important expectations from God for us, uh, I think is a good thing. So hopefully uh, you got something out of that, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.